one this is special edition this is when I highlight Oklahoma athletics which in this case is from late March all the way up to the present and coming up we are going to talk about Oklahoma basketball how the women overachieved going all the way to the final four in San Antonio in what was supposed to have been a rebuilding season and we'll also talk about the Oklahoma men's basketball program why well because we have to we're going to talk about some interesting news that's happened which for Oklahoma this year has been redundant but they get more interesting news this week we'll dive into that but first we got to talk about the NFL draft which is coming up pretty soon and for Sam Bradford, it looks like serious cha-ching for the former Putnam City North star. It looks like Bradford will be the first Oklahoma Sooner taken overall in the NFL draft since Billy Sims held that honor 30 years ago back in 1980. Bradford, of course, only played seven quarters last year, had the shoulder problems, hurt the shoulder twice, only played one complete game. But... That not even close enough to deter the St. Louis Rams from selecting him number one. They will pick him number one. It is a guarantee. Um, as if there were any doubts that he would go number one, that was solidified at Oklahoma's most recent pro day in late March in which Bradford inside the Oklahoma practice facility uh, working out in front of over 20 NFL teams represented, including the St. Louis Rams, did an outstanding job during his throwing drills. Threw it over 60 times. I think he completed every pass but one. And uh, Bradford, even though he didn't bench press or didn't run the 40 during this pro day, um, really wowed the scouts because the big concern, of course, the shoulder. How would it react after surgery? This was his first public workout uh, since the surgery, and he did an outstanding job. In fact, one person watching it called it like Picasso. He was just that brilliant, a work of art. And I think for St. Louis, even though the, the Dumbacong Sioux of Nebraska was a serious consideration for overall number one pick, um, the Rams knew that they had a bigger need at quarterback, not just because Mark Bolger was aging. In fact, they just released him a few days ago, but because they needed somebody to be a leader for this team. And they feel that Bradford, with his talent, with his mechanics to play on the highest level, and also his character after interviewing him numerously, they're really impressed with his personality and also his leadership skills and naturally his talent. To the St. Louis Rams, Bradford is the perfect quarterback, at least potentially. Now, it's going to take Bradford a while, obviously, to adjust to the speed of the NFL. Don't expect great things in the first couple of seasons. It's going to be in a, a, what you would call probably um, on-the-job training Um first-hand learning. He's going to be thrown right into the fire. But I think Bradford, as long as he can keep the shoulder healthy and with the surgery that he just had, that shouldn't be a problem. I think Bradford, in time, is going to be a viable NFL quarterback. How good? Well, that's up to Bradford and up to St. Louis offensive line to protect him. So we'll have to wait and see. Have an open mind, though, that it's going to take Bradford a while to adjust to the speed uh, and the talent that the NFL game presents. Now, talking about Oklahoma, how about Gerald McCoy? Looks like he's going to be a high pick in the draft. Tampa Bay picks number three. It looks like Tampa Bay will select Gerald McCoy, so congrats to him. And Trent Williams, this is going to be an offensive line filled draft. It looks like uh, Russell Lacoon of Oklahoma State will be a top five pick. Trent Williams will probably be right behind him as well. So, you're looking at Williams and also Jermaine Gresham, the tight end from the Sooners. Didn't play last year because of his injuries, but he'll still be the number one tight end taken in the draft. Should be in the first round. So you're looking at four Oklahoma Sooners potentially going in the first round. It would be a shock otherwise if it were fewer than that. Dominic Franks will probably be picked on day two of the draft in the second round. This is not a deep draft as far as corners. So Dominic Franks, from his professional perspective, made the wise decision by coming out early because I think he will go in the second round. And also Keenan Clayton, I don't know where he's going to be picked, but I think somebody will take a chance on him. Guys that will also be in the draft but I can't perceive being taken, Austin English, I think he's going to be a big time long shot, not because he can't play in the NFL, but because I think teams will be too scared because of the multiple injuries. Now let's talk about the Oklahoma women's basketball team. And I have to admit, I didn't give them much of a chance at all of getting past the Sweet 16, let alone the Final Four. 
But boy, the job that they did at that Kansas City Regional, one of the best in that program's history, and they've had a lot of terrific teams. They've had more talented teams than this one, but this team managed to get to the Final Four, and they did it, in my opinion, because they played together and they learned as a team throughout the season. They didn't let a blowout home loss to Texas earlier in the year deter them. They came back and blew Oklahoma State out the following game. And they didn't let the Big 12 championship loss to Texas A&M deter them either because they just came back and won all four of the games in their region, including a thrilling one over Notre Dame in which Naisha Stevenson hits the game-winning three. Just a great, great story for her. Great story for this team, for Amanda Thompson, uh, for Evie Olajuwon, who I thought played a good regional uh, for Daniel Robinson, who does come back next year for Oklahoma. I thought those players were golden. This was a team, again, didn't expect to uh, make much of an impact in Kansas City, but Sherrick Cole, probably her best coaching job ever. Even though they lost to Stanford in the Final Four, they simply just got out-rebounded, out-muscled in that game. But still, that can't take away from the great job that they did. And like I said, they've had more talented teams than this. Got to remember, the Parrish Twins only got to one Final Four, which was the uh, preceding year. But they had more talented teams that could not get over that hump. This team did that, and again, they did it because they played together, and they truly act like family and truly love each other. I think that's a big reason why they went as far as they did. Now, talking about the opposite, how about the men's basketball team? And I don't feel any love on this team at all. In fact, I feel separation from this men's hoops team. That was just an absolute embarrassment, which absolutely, literally stunk up the court by losing their last nine, by getting two players during the season busted for shoplifting, by having another player whom accepted $3,000, allegedly, from an agent. That case has still yet to be worked out. We're talking about Tiny Gallon, of course. You have another player in Ray Willis. He's transferring. He's had enough with Oklahoma. Tommy Mason Griffin on his Facebook page just recently blasted Oklahoma, saying he's leaving, and he had some nice four-letter words to say. And how about Willie Warren? Found out just yesterday on April the 7th. He's leaving Oklahoma, too, which was no surprise at all. We thought he'd be gone because he wants to uh, go play in the NBA. Good luck, Willie. Yeah, good luck. So you got those players. Of course, Tony Crocker graduated. So it looks like unless the situation with Gallon has a happy ending and he's not suspended and he's not kicked off the team, you're only going to have one starter back next season, and that would be Kay Davis. Yikes! Now, Forty Bay says that uh, Jeff Capel should be um, should should not weather the blame because he doesn't play. All he does is coach. Let me share a little fun stat with you, okay? Of the last 30 seasons for the Oklahoma men's basketball team, 22 of those seasons, they went to the NCAA tournament. That's 73%. That's pretty good. Of those 30 seasons, in only three seasons did Oklahoma fail to go to a postseason tournament of any kind. In only three. 1981, and at that point, Oklahoma basketball was in the toilet. And then the other two seasons have been during the Jeff Capel era, his first year and this last year where Oklahoma didn't go to the NCAA, the NIT, the CBI, or the CIT. They didn't go to any of those NCAA-sanctioned tournaments. None of them. They finished 10th, and as bad as this past year was, next year looks even worse. And I kind of feel for Capel, but this team could very well be dead last next year. If that's the case... I don't see Jeff Capel lasting. He'll either quit, go somewhere else, or Joe C. will give him the pink slip. Bottom line is that Oklahoma basketball, it may not be a football program, but this basketball program has a lot of pride. It usually goes to the NCAA tournament and very rarely doesn't go to any tournament at all. Capel did recruit these All-Americans, but All-American talent does not necessarily mean All-American person. It doesn't mean All-American character. And when you get these players, you have to understand what you're dealing with. You're dealing with egos, and it doesn't always mean that they're going to get along with each other. And this men's basketball program had too much turmoil, and you saw the end result. So Capel, this next year is big for him, and if they end up doing as bad or worse, I don't see Capel lasting. And that's really a shame because he's a nice guy, but, of course, Jeff Capel, he recruited those players that, again, have had issues. And... We'll see what happens next year for Sooner Basketball. 
Well, that will do it for a special edition. We will talk about Oklahoma baseball the next time around. Not off to too bad of a start, but they got swept this past weekend by Texas in the education of what it takes to be a great baseball program. And Oklahoma, not quite there yet, even though their overall record is pretty good. And we'll also talk about the uh, red-white game, which comes up on April the 17th. And by the way, there will be no TV or no webcast for that game. So if you want to see the game, you have to be at the game to watch it in its entirety. Again, that will do it for Special Edition. We'll have another episode coming up in either late April or early May. So keep it right here, and thank you for watching.